What we've got here is the M106 apple rootstock and this is a dwarfing rootstock so that when it's grafted onto the scion wood of the apple tree you want it will grow into a small apple tree that is best suited for commercial um, apple propagation in orchards. So most of our commercial scale apple production is all used with this M106 rootstock. And the way it's propagated, like what you can see here, is that you grow the um, M106 apple tree and you lay it down horizontally in the ground and all the branches of that tree will poke up through the ground and if you um, dig away in the soil where it joins the main trunk of the tree, it would, would have grown some roots and you can cut it off at the base of the trunk and you'll get a small little tree uh, with the root system there that you can then transfer where you're going to graft it onto the sign wood of the particular apple tree you, that you want. So this is just the way that um, you propagate the, the root stock. It's called um, ground layering and it's, and it's how you propagate something. Um, the advantages of ground layering is that you're taking a, a fully grown tree with a big root system and it's going to be growing very healthily so the side branches are going to to grow fast and they're going to grow a root system fast because the main tree that it's attached to has a well-developed root system so there's a lot of flow of uh, sugars and water through that uh, tree which is going to lead to good uh, growth of these side branches and good growth of the root system. So the next stage is taking this and grafting it onto the sign wood. So this is a graft between a M106 rootstock and a Monte Surprise apple. So the sign wood which is the uh, Monte Surprise is this top part here and this is a whip and graft, a uh, whip and tongue graft sorry and this is the M106 rootstock and what you're trying to achieve with a graft is um, provide a nice um, nice shape to allow those two um, two bits of wood to bind strongly and when, when you graft them together what you're trying to do is expose a nice amount of cambium because it's the cambium which is the layer of cells just below the bark which will fuse together and when that happens a flow of sap and water can can occur between these two um, two bits, bits of tree and once that flow of sap and water is established then the two um, trees can join together um, become one tree and and the flow of sap and water will go right through the whole plant from the rootstock um, all the way up to the sign wood. And what you're achieving with um, getting a graft like this is that the rootstock has uh, particular properties such as in this case um, dwarfing the tree so it's going to produce a small tree because it's um, only got a small root system and that small root system is going to reduce the overall size of the tree but also the rootstock can um, provide other adaptations such as um, ability to survive in, in certain poor soils or a certain resistance to pests or diseases that are in an area. And then the sign wood, which is this top part of the plant, is the part, part of the plant that's going to produce fruit. And it will. And what you do is you select um, the sign wood from an apple tree or, or another type of fruit tree that produces the fruit that you like. And because that part um, of the tree is going to be exactly the same as the tree that you took it from, you're going to produce the same type of fruit. So in this case it's taken from a Monte Surprise apple, which is a big juicy apple that um, has very high anti-cancerol properties. And by taking a cutting of that tree and binding it to this um, rootstock here, you're going to produce a tree that produces the Monte Surprise apples exactly the same as the tree you took it from. And what's really remarkable about this I think is that you know a lot of these varieties are you know hundreds of years old and and you can keep taking cuttings from the same tree and keep growing that same tree for thousands of years um, potentially just by um, taking a fresh new growth of that tree um, attaching it to a to a new rootstock and then you can keep growing that tree indefinitely. So it's a pretty amazing process, I think. So this is the next stage. We've cut the base of the side branches from the M106 rootstock. They've been collected into bundles and they've been grafted onto the sign wood. And over winter, they're gonna lie in the ground here, start to strike a root system. 
and then once that tree becomes established we can transfer it to grow um, to one year or half a year in, in, in size before we um, uproot that tree and bag it for sale. So, so this is the next stage here, so this is after the first year of growth where the sign wood has attached to the rootstock, it's grown for a whole year and it's established a healthy root system, so it's been separated out from that bundle um, that it spent the first winter, first winter in, and it's been planted into the ground, so um, this winter when all the leaves have fallen off, these trees are going to be dug out and they're going to be sold as a bare rooted apple tree. So they've, they've spent um, one whole summer of, of growth developing their root system for this graft to strengthen and then um, this winter this tree will be ready for sale as a, as a small um, apple tree to be planted out for its first winter. And it's a good time to plant these apple trees too in their winter because there's not such a, well um, the flow of sap in the apple tree is, is reduced and all the energy goes down into the root system. So if you plant it in the first winter, it's going to establish a good strong root system and it's not going to stress the plant so much because there's not a flow of sap and water through the plant that will um, wilt the plant and stress it. So also, you know, in winter there's not so strong environmental conditions, it's not going to be dried out, the um, soil is going to be nice and moist, um, so it will be the best time for this uh, tree to establish its root system in, in the place that you're going to plant it. Um, and establish a nice root system in that first winter to get it through its first summer. Um, some of the considerations when you do do that first plant is, is to support it with a good, um, good compost, so a good layer of compost in the hole that you planted in, to mulch it on top really thoroughly to avoid um, a lot of water evaporating and, and stressing the plant. And depending on where you do plant it, it's often good to establish a drip um, water system in the first summer as well just to give it an extra little bit of water because it's only going to have a small um, root system in its first year and if you encounter conditions that are you know extended periods of drought or just intense sunshine it can easily um, overstress these young plants and, and kill them in their first year. So it's really just trying to um, give it a little bit of support in that first summer to allow it to get a good root system down there um, to, to be able to survive the, the stresses of its. So here's a Monty Surprise apple tree that's coming onto its third year now that it's been planted out. Um, so you can still see the graft between the, the rootstock here, the M106 rootstock and the Monty Surprise apple. What you sometimes get in a graft between these two types of trees is this bulbous form over where the graft is because the Monty Surprise is such a vigorous, fast growing tree and the M106 rootstock is such a slow growing dwarfing tree that, that you can sometimes get a, a, a bit of a strange bulbous form around where the more vigorous tree is grafted onto the less vigorous tree. In this orchard here there's been an effort to help um, develop the health and the, the diversity within the understory between, um, of the fruit trees here. So they've been using a lot of comfrey and uh, what they do is they graze sheep in the the strips between the rows of apple trees and they work on developing the understory here and what the sheep don't um, eat when they browse through they come through with a little right on mower and they mow it down um, late spring and, and uh, late summer and return the nutrients of the understory as a mulch um, back on top of the surface of the soil and then all the earthworms and the other soil um, invertebrates are going to bring down the nutrients from that mulch back into the soil and, and help uh, feed those nutrients back into the fruit trees again. So it's a way of you know, protecting the fruit trees from the, the, the invasion of grass around the base of the fruit trees that don't, uh, are not very compatible with fruit trees um, because they're quite bacterial dominated in, in the environment they create. Um, and it's far more beneficial to have these um, forest herb type plants around the fruit trees and then you can make use of the grazers to, to eat that grass, convert it to a manure which will help feed the fruit trees and then the understory plants that the grazers don't eat you can then mulch and return them as nutrients um, back to the trees. And you could do it with other things too, you can incorporate you know, nitrogen fixating trees and um, berry plants and, and edible herbs in the understory so um, 
they're particularly useful if you don't have grazers in your system because the grazers will tend to over browse those plants and damage them uh, but if you fence off the um, fruiting strips from the grazers you can have that diversity of plants in your understory or you can um, have their grazers in like a mobile grazing tractor system so that they don't get um, in amongst the fruit trees or you can even just mow the um, strip in between the fruit trees and return the grass growth and, and the other herbs that grow in the rows as a mulch back um, around the fruit trees. In a, in a permaculture orchard what you're striving to achieve is a functional diversity in your planting. So this orchard here is a nice example of that where there's a variety of plums and apricots and apple trees and peaches and uh, pears and, and they're all um, planted together in a, in a guild of plants so that you get a diversity of production throughout the whole year um, and in this case they're all heritage species as well so they've got um, extra resistance against uh, pests and diseases to this region and we're lucky here in Wanganui that we can plant just about any type of fruit tree and, and it, you know, depending on the, on the conditions of that particular year, if it's a particularly hot year, you might get the uh, pears and the apricot, uh, sorry, the apricots and the um, persimmons producing really well. Or if it's a colder year, you might, like this year, you, you get um, a good production of plums. But by having that diversity in your planting, you're, you're providing yourself some assurance in your food production that no matter what the conditions of that particular year are, you're going to have some of your um, crops produce well and particularly now with global warming and, and having quite a wide uh, diversity in our years um, between having wet damp summers or really hot dry summers having that diversity in your planting is going to ensure that no matter what the conditions are on that particular year there's going to be something that will produce well and um, give you a good good range of food for that year for, for your, your home production. So this is a graph between a M106 rootstock and a Monte Surprise apple. So the sign wood, which is the uh, Monte Surprise, is this top part here. And this is a whip and graft, a uh, whip and tongue graft, sorry. And this is the M106 rootstock. And what you're trying to achieve with a graft is um, provide a nice, um, nice shape to allow those two. Um, two bits of wood to bind strongly and when when you graft them together what you're trying to do is expose a nice amount of cambium because it's the cambium which is the layer of cells just below the bark which will fuse together and when that happens a flow of sap and water can can occur between these two um, two bits, bits of tree and once that flow of sap and water is established then the two um, trees can join together um, become one tree and and the flow of sap and water will go right through the whole plant from the rootstock um, all the way up to the signwood. And what you're achieving with um, getting a graft like this is that the rootstock has uh, particular properties such as in this case um, dwarfing the tree so it's going to produce a small tree because it's um, only got a small root system and that small root system is going to reduce the overall size of the tree but also the rootstock can um, provide other adaptations such as um, ability to survive in, in certain poor soils or a certain resistant to pests or diseases that are in an area. And then the signwood, which is this top part of the plant, is the part, part of the plant that's going to produce fruit. And it will. And what you do is you select um, the signwood from an apple tree or, or another type of fruit tree that produces the fruit that you like. And because that part um, of the tree is going to be exactly the same as the tree that you took it from you're going to produce the same type of fruit so in this case it's taken from a Monte Surprise apple which is a big juicy apple that um, has very high anti-cancerous properties and by taking a cutting of that tree and binding it to this um, rootstock here you're going to produce a tree that produces the Monte Surprise apples exactly the same as the tree you took it from. And what's really remarkable about this I think is that you know a lot of these varieties are you know hundreds of years old and and you can keep taking cuttings from the same tree and keep growing that same tree for thousands of years um, potentially just by um, taking a fresh new growth of that tree 
um, attaching it to a to a new rootstock, and then you can keep growing that tree indefinitely. So it's a pretty amazing process, I think.